All right, here we are. The 2021 NHL Entry Draft is tomorrow, but we're going over a guy in the last episode of Why I Won for this season who might not actually be drafted tomorrow. Because he might actually be a guy who's taken a little bit later. It wouldn't surprise me if this player was a second round guy. If he gets into the first round, you know what? I'm actually going to be really happy if that's the case. But either or, this is indeed the final Why I Want video for the 2021 draft. It has been my pleasure. Thank you to those in the Carson Lambos video in the penultimate episode who commented in the comment section below, Yeti. I'm not going to tell you to stick around to the end of this video to be featured in the next Why I Want video because, hey, the next one's probably going to be done in a few months, so we're going to have to wait a while. Either or, though, we're ending things off with a bang. We started 2021's Why I Want series talking about Luke Hughes, a guy who was going to be playing for the University of Michigan Wolverines. Well, guess what? I wanted to end the series with another guy who was also going to be suiting up for Michigan next season and who also was on the NTDP. Today's Why I Want is going over Dylan Duke, a guy who I've absolutely been in love with the past little while. And in fact, I honestly feel kind of bad because I think it was earlier in one of our playoff live streams, I think it was Raybro who asked me in the chat, what are your thoughts on Dylan Duke? And I had to straight up say, I'm sorry, man. I don't know what's going on because I'm not really too deep in the prospects this year. And you know what? I'm really happy to say that that has changed. Ray, bro, if you're still sticking around here, this is the video you've been looking for. If you wanted my own personal opinion on this guy, who exactly is Dylan Duke? Why are we talking about him here today? And where is he going to go in the draft? Well, he is a 2003 March born 5'10", 181 pound center playing for the US NTDP. Now, as you can see, 5'10", a center, not really the biggest guy out there, but he was on the NTDP, and he was still able to do some damage with that squad, posting up a total of 49 points in 50 games played, with 29 goals to boot. Not to mention, he was at the U18s for Team USA, where he scored himself 4 points in 5 games played, 3 of those being goals. Dylan Duke was the second best NTDP player in terms of points and goals this season for the U18 squad, and he is a guy who I actually think is one of the more underrated, undervalued players in this entire 2021 draft. As we noted at the top, this is a guy who's going over to the University of Michigan later on in his career. So he's going to have himself some time to develop in the NCAA system. He probably won't be coming to an AHL or an NHL club anytime in the short term future. So you do have some time to marinate this guy in the collegiate system if your team ends up drafting him at the 2021 draft. The biggest thing you'll note with Dylan Duke is the fact that he does score a lot of goals. 29 goals in 50 games played certainly isn't something to scoff at. And if you take a look at how exactly it is he produces those goals, things get really interesting, especially when you start talking about his overall profile. This is because Dylan Duke gets a bulk of his offense done right smack dab in the blue paint of opposing nets. Sure. He's only 5'10", but this guy is absolutely fearless. He's always going to the front of the net. He's always battling hard. He's not afraid to get under defenses and into dangerous high-scoring areas. If he gets shoved off, hey, that's okay. He's slippery enough to the point where he can find himself a new angle, and he's strong enough to the point that it's really difficult to shove him off the puck either way, too. He's a small guy who plays a lot better than his frame dictates, and he's got skills up and tight to be able to produce offense that way. He does this by either banging away at rebounds after clogging the front of the net, using his tight little skills to get by goaltenders, or using his really great hand-eye coordination to tip pucks in at weird angles and by the goalies. There are a few goals this season that he scored where it was just him standing in front and the shot comes in at a strange angle and he ends up tipping it in a way that's really unexpected. It's just one of the many ways he's able to produce. Even away from the front of the net, he still has a really good ability of just giving the opponents a hard time because his feet are always moving. He's always getting up in there. He's not afraid to battle things out on the boards. He's not afraid to forecheck in the offensive zone when he doesn't have the puck. He's a ball of fire going around there, really making his opponent's life miserable. In his own zone, hey, that attitude doesn't die down. He's got a fire in him that's able to go into the boards, fight things out, so much to the point that he's not afraid to pinch down low, too, which is usually the area of the ice where defensemen are mostly going to be present. Duke is all over the ice all the time, and he's not afraid to do what the team needs him to do in order to facilitate play. His work ethic and heart really do push him in the right direction, and it's one of the reasons why I think he's one of the most underrated guys in this entire draft. He just forces results through power of will out there for the NTDP. And 
combined with all the pretty good skills that he has as well, it makes for a very interesting package. Now, a lot of the things that I'm describing about this guy when he is off the puck, he seems a lot like that Tyler Mott, you know, just really hard-nosed, hard-working kind of guy that does things all over the ice, except where Dylan Duke's profile differs from that of the Tyler Motts or the Paul Byrons is that Dylan Duke legitimately has some good offensive potential. His wrist shot from up high is honestly pretty solid as well. He can pick corners and find lanes. Combined with his ability to find goals in the front of the net by banging away at it or deflecting pucks, he is an all-out contribution machine offensively while also having the work rate and work ethic of a high-energy depth forward. It's why they used him on the NTDP, on the penalty kill, the power play, all situations this guy was out there doing his thing, because he's just got that team-first mentality that really allows him to play most roles he is given in the game of hockey. This is what Smot Scouting said on their scouting report for Dylan Duke about his defensive game, that it's arguably one of the most NHL-ready as far as forwards are concerned in the entire draft class. He demonstrates an excellent ability to backcheck and has zero issues digging deep in the corners to create defensive zone turnovers. Duke's active stick in the corners allow him to poke check attackers and regain control of the puck quite often. He is also not afraid to take a hit in order for his teammates to pick up the puck and engage a breakout, which I'm sure many NHL scouts would appreciate. So even though he is this guy who is only 5'10", 181 pounds, he still is a hard-nosed center with some offensive flair that is ranked 32nd overall in the consolidated ranking over here. Elite Prospects has him at 40, 41 by future considerations. The lowest ranking here is McKean's who have him at 86. The highest is actually, well, the consolidated ranking, as well as Smot Scouting who have him at 32. NHL Central Scouting has him at the 29th spot for the best North American skaters, and Craig Button has him at number 42 as well. So he is just kind of all over the place when it comes to his draft projection. Obviously, the averages are brought a little bit down by Bob McKenzie's list and McKean's list. But at the end of the day, I think Dylan Duke could become a really nice bottom middle six all-round forward who can play on the power play, play on your first penalty kill, and just bang away at pucks. Maybe go out there, get 10, 15 goals through sheer power of will if he pans out to his potential at the NHL level. This is a guy who, if he's available in the second round, mid-second round, late second round, whatever, I think this guy could be a really interesting pickup for any NHL team looking for projectable NHL qualities in their prospects. I would personally be pretty surprised if Dylan Duke went in the first round this season, but it would most likely be a very welcome surprise to me. If you want to talk about, oh, you've said all this good stuff about him, Lego, he produces, he does this, he's got a work ethic and all that, what's his downfall? Why is he only ranked 32nd on the consolidated ranking here on Elite Prospects? Well, he could use some improvements on his skating. The pace he plays at isn't necessarily the best, even though he plays with a lot of heart and he always goes out there with a really good work ethic, he could use some work on his stride. This is from the same scouting report on Smot scouting on Dylan Duke. His skating is perhaps the most notable aspect of his game that could use a little polishing. He tends to have more of an upright skating stance, but this isn't a huge area of concern, as he possesses the agility and edge work needed to escape opponents when required. He also doesn't boast an abundance of explosiveness, but once again, he has enough to get by. His stride has definitely progressed as the season has gone on, as he has shown a much wider stride, allowing him to generate more speed and balance. The best attribute to his skating, though, is his durability and balance, because he can take a beating in front of the net and still manage to keep his balance relatively easy, which bodes well for how he projects at the next level. So, if he works on his stride, maybe widens things up a little bit more, maybe do some individual workouts to improve his stride and improve his explosivity, it could really bode well into pushing him into the higher tiers of players in this draft, especially with the fact that he is already 5'10", he already has that inherent disadvantage instilled within him as an NHL prospect. So, that's Dylan Duke to me. I think he's a fantastic player. I would love to see this guy get drafted and given a chance at the NHL level because he does a lot of things really, really well out there. I do hope that if you made it to the end of this video, you still find the need to comment whatever it is you feel that you want to comment about this series and what we did in 2021, why I want is officially complete for 2021, and I believe we did 28 episodes, you know? I feel really good about that, to be honest, because I know we kind of crammed everything together at the end there, making a video every two days, but it's mostly because I feel really bad about last year. We didn't do too many of these videos last year, and this year we kind of waited until, like, 
a little bit too late to start making the videos and actually talking about the prospects, and we would have segments where there would be like two, three week gaps in between episodes, and it was like, yeah, I really want to commit myself to learning more about the draft class this year and the prospects and making up for the lack of why I wants last year, so we kind of had to go turbo mode for the last month and a half pretty much, so I thank you so much for sticking around here for the why I want series in 2021. We'll be back next year talking about more prospects. Don't worry, my friends. Next year, this is when the prospects get even elite, baby. So thank you for sticking around here for 2021's Why I Want. Talk to me in the comments what you think about Dylan Duke and the series as a whole. I hope you enjoyed this video. Rolls in the 99. And bye. <laughs>